Good afternoon to one and all. Today I am going to present a rare case of sinorbital cutaneous fistula. So, sinorbital cutaneous fistula is a connection between the sinus or vital space and the outer skin, most commonly seen in the frontal sinus and reported as a complication of orbital excentration. And risk factors include radiotherapy, sinus disease and immunocompromise. So, a 35-year-old male, a resident of Amravati, presented to the OPD with complaints of headache since 4 months and purulent discharge underneath both eyebrows since 3 months for which an eye consultation was done and only an antibiotic was prescribed. Three months prior to this, he had a complaint of spelling below both eyebrows with pus pointing for which multiple consultations were done but never was investigated. On ocular examination in the right eye, the visual acuity was 612 partial and in the left eye 612 and best corrected visual acuity was 66 in both eyes with near vision and color vision maintained. Uh, the examination of eyebrows, the cranial apparatus and eyelid were within normal limits. Regurgitation test was negative and syringing had patency in both eyes. Orbital examination was within normal limit except for the left eye which showed mild inferior dystopia and a fistula was seen uh, in the right eye 12 mm superior and in the left eye 10 mm superior to the superior lid margin which showed an exudation of purulent discharge with granulation tissue and the surrounding skin was edematous and erythematous as shown in the picture. On palpation, the temperature was raised and tenderness was present and on applying pressure over the area, purulent discharge was seen to be exudating, but there was no lymphadenopathy noted. The anterior segment examination was within normal limit and the pupil was normal size and reacting to light. On fundus examination was within normal limit except for the nasal margin which showed to have disc blurring. So, based on the history and examination, a provisional diagnosis of orbital fistula under evaluation was made with the following differential diagnosis. So, uh, she, he was planned for a pus culture sensitivity which showed methicillin resistant coagulase negative staphylococci sensitive to vancomycin, doxycycline and tetracycline and OCT showed minimal segmental thickening, thickening and uh, nasal elevation of the disc margin. Radiological investigations showed CT brain in which lytic erosions of frontal bone involving both orbits and extraconal soft tissue thickening was also noted as shown in these pictures. So the final diagnosis was made based on the orbital examination, pus culture sensitivity and CT scan which showed both eye orbital uh, frontal osteomyelitis with sinoorbital cutaneous fistula. So uh, based on this the patient was admitted under ENT and intra, uh, intravenous antibiotics Vancomycin was started and tablet doxycycline was started orally and a surgery of bicoronal incision and drainage with debridement of necrotic tissue and removal of fistula was planned and medicine referral in view of disc edema was done and tablet acetazolamide was started but in spite of adequate counselling regarding the risk of recurrence the patient denied surgery because of the high systemic risk. So, and in this we can clearly see the patient improved system symptomatically by intravenous antibiotics and headache and discharge even without surgical intervention and the disc edema was seen to be resolved. This is my literature review which shows that CT is the fundamental tool in the diagnosis of a complicated frontal sinusitis and uh, radiological investigations are essential to rule out the anatomical status of the orbital pathologies and endoscopic assisted approaches are essential for obliteration of the frontal sinus pathologies. So, uh, the clinical implications show that a thorough radiological investigations is important and prompt my, my microbiological investigations on virulent discharge is required and a multidisciplinary collaborative teamwork is essential to have a successful result. These are my references. Thank you so much. So, um, any patient with this kind of a fistula, normally what comes to your mind in, in, in a country like ours? You had a bilateral discharging sinus which is communicating. So, what comes to your mind? Uh, Ma'am, uh, in patients who have immunocompromised, especially in COVID, mucor mycosis can be a, a Okay, one mucor mycosis. Next. Mucor came now. Earlier on, what would be something sitting in the OPD, you would immediately think of something. Mem, chronic frontal sinusitis can lead to, if a, uh, the organism is highly virulent, it can cause erosion of the bone. So you never thought of tuberculosis? You yes, see a lot of patients with tuberculosis presenting like that. Usually bilateral is a little uncommon to have, but still you, you should, that comes in your differential diagnosis once these kind of patients come in. 
And then, um, you, you know, all these patients, I don't know, I'm surprised that your patient has completely resolved without any surgical intervention. What they do is they, they'll be silent for a while and they'll come back again after a couple of months with again the discharging sinuses. So yes, usually the best line is that you have to remove the entire tract surgically and then only they resolve with the complete treatment. Yes, so I guess the take home message should not be that just giving uh, primary antibiotics is going to help. But you definitely did a very good job in the sense that you took immediately cultures were taken from the discharge. So that is one thing that needs to be done. Mostly what happens is people start on empirical systemic therapy and you are unable to, uh, you know, isolate any organism after that. So the in immediate step should be first to take the cultural sensitivity from whatever discharges you are having and then you go in for uh, any kind of a systemic uh, medication. So that part you have done very well. You have done very good, uh, you know, radio radiological worker. But then at the end of the day, you still require a surgical intervention. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we had counseled the patient regarding the risk of recurrence, ma'am, but the patient denied surgery. We had told ki a uh, uh, fistulic tommy with debridement of the wound is required because the it will recur after again. But the patient was then lost to follow up, ma'am. I think very well worked up and very well documented. Uh, but at this stage now, what, what do you think? Suppose this patient is willing for surgery with a chronic discharging uh, sort of, you know, fistula. What would be your management plan now? There is no acute infection right now. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, for the complete eradication of the disease, a uh, fistulic tommy with the, the wound debridement should be done. And in this case, the ENT surgeons had even uh, planned on placing a drain so that the, uh, the uh, the entire pathology is there because it was a chronic, uh, more than three months history of uh, frontal sinusitis, which complicated into this. So a complete eradication of disease is required. So, so mostly now it's sort of in chronic osteomyelitis kind of yes, picture. So unless and until you go inside, and maybe there will be some dead bone sequestrum which will be lying there. So mostly till the time those are taken care of, removed, nicely divided. Uh, they will keep on recurring and coming back. So yes, maybe just a fistulectomy might not be sufficient. Might have to go inside, curate the dead bone out. And then accordingly, he will have some amount of cicatrization of the eyelid. He must be having some lag of thalmus or you know something like that. So okay. that also probably needs to be taken care of. Yes, yeah, but well present. Thank you, ma'am. And sometimes actually, you know, you may just get a super added infection in your cultures. There may be something else happening inside. Another reason. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.